Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. So unless you're new to the channel, in which case, welcome to the channel. So you may come across at some point uh, what you can see here in green in the Django URL patterns. So this is a regular expression operation or a regular expression matching operation or regex for short or sometimes regex with a P on the end also referred to as rational expression. I'm sure at some point someone's going to standardize that, but this is the topic of this tutorial. So this is a beginner's guide to understanding regular expressions or regular expression path URLs in Django projects. So this is one of these getting started with something new. So likelihood is that from a different project in this channel, I've referred you to this video. And that's just really to get you up to speed with the basics of using regular expressions. And then likely that I've then gone ahead and provided you a full example of how you might want to utilize this in your project. So here's a guide on how to get started with regular expressions. So I'm going to make the assumption that you know what a URL path is in Django, or at least you've utilized a URL path in Django. And you can see an example here, path, and then you point it to your view and then you might give it a name. So this is really quite simple and it's useful for most cases. So if my memory serves me correct, this hasn't always been the case in Django using paths. Um, you may see examples online utilizing other tools. And I definitely remember a time utilizing these relative or regular expressions. So you can see an example here of a regular expression at the bottom. So these are powerful pattern mapping tools. That's a bit of a mouthful to say. So this allows us to do many different things over a traditional URL path we might want to generate in Django. So it might not be always too obvious when you might want to utilize this type of facility. And that's why I probably referred you to this tutorial before I started then actually giving you more of a concrete example. So I won't go through when you might want to utilize these. We'll just focus on how to utilize these in this tutorial. But what's probably important to point out, at least to begin with, is that these regular expressions, they can do exactly the same as our traditional paths we might want to use in Django. So what's important, if we do pass anything over from a regular expression, then each captured argument is sent to the view as a string, and that can be fairly important in some cases. But let's just reiterate and just establish the fact that regular expression operations, if we wanted to create all of our URLs um, paths in our existing projects, we could just translate them over to regular expressions. So regular expressions will also provide us the same functionality as our normal paths. So I'm going to provide you some code examples shortly, and we can see this in action. So let's start understanding these RE paths. So you can see here that if we wanted to use a regular expression path, first of all, we would need to import it in from the URLs. So normally we'd have path here. So we could use path and regular expressions in, at the same time if we wanted to. Um, obviously not necessarily in the same instance, um, but on different lines, uh, defining different paths. So we can definitely mix and match uh, the regular expressions and the normal paths we utilize now. So you can see here that we imported in first the regular expression operations. And so we define not path this time, but the regular expression path. And you can see here, we've got some special characters, the R and the hat. So the R is just a special character we start our path with, and it's a raw string literal syntax. So we're just literally just defining the fact that we're going to use regular expressions. And then the hat basically just matches the beginning of the text. So this is just saying that our string that we want to match, our URL that we pass into our browser, we want to match that to, to begin with the articles. Essentially, we're just saying this is where the matching starts here with articles. So we can see if I wanted to translate this into our normal path, all I would do is take uh, this away here, and that's what our normal path would look like. 
So you can see that there's just a few extra details here to turn this into a regular expression. Okay, so now we have an additional unit. You can see here we have the R and starts again, we have our hat and more the carrot, and then we have a link here that starts with art. So our matching string must start with art. So you can see here that we extend and we have what is called a named group syntax. So if you've used Django to send, for example, an ID or a slug from the URL to the view, this is a similar type of facility so or function. So here you can see in pink, this is a named variable that we're going to use in the view to reference the data. So here we're just setting up the fact that in our view, if we want to access the data from this URL, we're going to need to reference it by year. So take a look down here in this example in green. So what you're looking at here, this path represents this here in green. So this is what this path is going to capture. So the year um, is going to be passed over to the view. And then inside of that will be the number of value 2003. So here in blue, you can see the match against character set values. So that can be zero to nine or A to Z. So here we're just defining in our URL what to expect. Are we expecting numbers? Are we expecting um, characters? So here we're just defining that. So if, for example, in this scenario where I've defined zero to nine, I'd put an A or an S or a character, then this line or this URL won't be matched against this because it has a character and we're only defining zero to nine. So we also need to define the fact that we're utilizing A to Z. So we would put that just there. So I'm going to give you some more concrete examples in a second with that. So in addition to that, what we can also do is define this extra additional value here. So this defines the fact that our numbers that we're passing into this section here has to be four values. So if I were to add a new value here, this would not be captured at all. This URL would not be captured. So it has to be four. So I'm just defining that. So you can start to see here that we can be really specific and offer more features than the initial or original path. So what, what I meant by that is if we would just use the uh, path facility that we currently have in Django or the path format. Thank you. Okay, so finally we have the dollar which is just the equivalent to the hat, but it's just the opposite. So here we start the string match, and then here we finish it after the dollar. So for example, if I were to add a new item here, well then the dollar here is saying, no, we're gonna finish here. So I'm only gonna match this. If you add anything else, I'm not gonna match the whole thing and nothing is going to happen, or at least here it's not gonna happen. So this won't get matched. So like I said, what I'm referring to matched, hopefully you understand what I mean by matched. So if we type this into the URL, this would be matched. And obviously when we match a URL string here, it obviously takes you to the view or takes the data to the view and so on like normal. So just before we go over to the code and I'll provide you some more concrete examples, I wanted to mention this simply because it is also in the Django documentation, unnamed group syntax. So remember what I said here that this syntax here, when we pass over this number to our view, we reference it by the name year. Whereas when we utilize a unnamed group syntax, we simply don't have that value passed across to the view. Now there are some special cases where we could handle this data in the view potentially, um, but I just wanted to show an example, just the fact, like I said, it's, it's in the um, Django documentation so I just wanted to mention it. You may see it in some examples um, that you find. So like the previous example, you can see here, we're still taking in zero to nine uh, numbers or values, and we're still lim limiting it to four numbers. So the features are exactly the same, except for we're using unnamed group syntax here, rather than naming the value in the view. Okay, so let's go over to some code and have a look at some of the other variations and special characters. So here's our simple example. We just have a, a books application here. We only have one book in our 
table or database and you can see that when I click on it it goes to the single page. So let's have a look at some of the different combinations we can utilize. So now in the code you can see in the books in the URLs here we have all the URL patterns. So we have a home page, we have a, a string here for different genres and we have a path to add new books and then the slug. So that produces the individual item or the individual book page. So let's have a go now at translating some of these paths into our regular expressions. So the first step is to import the regular expression into the project here. So we import that in and now we can start building. So we're going to just match this path but utilizing regular expressions. So re path and there's nothing to match so we can just use the r and leave it blank and then we can just go ahead and just copy what we have here the views and then give it the name home so now let's just go in the project and you can see it works so refresh and the page is as we saw earlier so in actual fact that's not particularly too useful because in actual fact it actually matches everything so we'll never be able to actually leave the home page. So let's just go back in and let's just have a look here. So if we were to use the hat and the dollar and then go back again. So we're going to, it's going to perform the same type of operation. Um, but this time it's now going to allow us to actually move to the other URLs. So essentially we're using the dollar just to finish. So we're saying similar to this, we want to go to the home, um, but that's all. So we need to use and um, remember to use the hat and the dollar. But of course, you'll notice that this is actually more code than the path. So there's actually more code that you need to write. Although it's very small, it kind of seems a bit pointless utilizing relative paths here, um, relative expressions, sorry. So you're probably just better off in this instance, just utilizing path. But at least you know now how you can utilize relative paths here. So next up is the G for genre. And then we can see here we're taking a string genre. And that's going to allow us to see all the books in a different genre. So you can see that I've pre-written our path here. So you can see we start off with the R and then we use the hat and G. So the G represents this path here, the G slash. And now you can see that we want to match or we want to set up our variable to pass our data across or to utilize in the view. So here we set the genre inside of the left and right chevron here. And so angle brackets. And then you can then see that I've specified that the genre must be A to Z. So it has to be a character. So if I use a number, it's not going to work. And then we move on to this last character here, this special character plus. So this is going to match one or more of the preceding characters. So essentially it's just going to match all the characters. So I utilize plus. And then you can see here we have slash and dollar representing the fact that this is the end of the statement or the string that we want to match. So let's go ahead now and just go back into the code. And you can see here I've typed in programming and it works. I think I've got another genre called other and then it just shows those books. So notice that this can be as, if I go back, this can be as long as you like, because we're just using plus. And then if I were to try and add something here, you'll see that it doesn't work anymore. So the dollar protects us from that. Also, if I were to use a number, that would also cause an issue. Of course, there isn't actually any categories in that name, but we just assume that that would also cause a problem. So if you didn't know what we were talking about up until this point, you can see that we're trying to match the URL to our URL patterns and then to send the data over to our views. Apologies if that wasn't obvious beforehand. So hopefully at this point also you start to see that we can be a little bit more explicit in how we represent the string matches here by utilizing all these different special characters over the traditional path. So next up is the path add. So by all means, pause and try and have a go and then come back and see what the solution might be. 
So in actual fact, in this case, you can see that all we've added is the re underscore, the r, and the hat. And then we've just now produced our relative path or relative expression. I'm not too sure why I keep saying relative, but um, our regular expression. I do apologize. Um, it's, it's late. It's been a long day. Okay, so last of all, we have the slug here. So let's go ahead now and just change this into our new path. So now we can see the example. So we have the path again. We have the R, the hat, and then we define in the slug. This time I'm defining the fact that I want the characters 0 to 9 and A to Z. I use the plus again, and you can see the rest is exactly the same. So if we go ahead now and just refresh the page, we can see that that works. However, on the index page, if I go into the templates and index or the home page, sorry, here I'm utilizing these URLs. So I'm trying to reverse these URLs to get the full URLs for different items. So if I now go into the home page um, for the book, sorry, you can see that in actual fact, there's no reverse match. So it does sometimes cause a problem. So it doesn't look like it can translate the slug. So first of all, just take a look at where, what it's calling. So books, book detail. So let's go into the URLs. So this is the book details. This is what we've just changed. So this is obviously causing the problem. So we can't reverse this. So if we go into the views, we're looking for book detail. So the current, currently we're utilizing these class-based views. And we're looking at the detail view. Now notice that this class has been extended. So I just wanted to point out also that if you weren't to use query set and then also explicitly extend the query set here and actually define the slug uh, from the URL, that's, sometimes it can cause problems actually generating the initial view on the page. So that's something to consider if you are having problems with these uh, different types of paths, then just make sure um, or just check if you're using so regular expressions, just make sure that you check your views and it may be that you need to be a little bit more explicit in terms of the query set and what you're actually returning or trying to match, in this case, the slug. So let's go back into the URL now. So I've made some changes in actual fact to the URL because our view is actually fine. So notice now that I've swapped over from explicitly uh, utilizing 0 to 9 and A to Z. And now I'm using this slash W. So the W is a special character which is going to match a word character. Uh, any upper, lowercase characters, digits, or underscores. So it's pretty much going to do everything for us. So now that I've switched over to this, you'll see that if I go back and then refresh, go into the individual items, or oh, is actual fact it was this page, wasn't it, that wasn't working. And now you can see that everything is now working again. So again, just a little bit of troubleshooting. If you're having problems utilizing regular expressions, um, there are many ways of defining similar things with regular expressions. Um, so I pointed out a few of them here, and we have covered now the main special characters that you might be utilizing or you might see when working with regular expressions. So let's take a look at how we can extend these expressions here. So we have the slug as per normal. So let's just take in another parameter. So let's go ahead and just copy the section here. Say we wanted a new parameter that was uh, maybe the something new. Uh, so let's go ahead now and see this in action. So here you can see that it no longer accepts just the slug. We now have to add something new. And there we go. So it still performs the same action because in the background, we're just taking the slug and performing the lookup in the database with the slug. But the string has been matched. The URL has been matched. Therefore, everything works. So we can go ahead and add an additional one. So let's just add some numbers this time. So let's go ahead and add the year. We're going to define four digits, zero to nine. And then we just go ahead and add some numbers here four numbers, and it still works. So notice if it was five numbers, it's not going to work, and so on. So 
obviously you can just test this out so if I had one to nine and press save and go back and then this should work okay but if I use a zero then we should cause it should cause a problem and there we go so hopefully you're feeling a little bit more confident now utilizing regular expressions I just wanted to show you one final thing and that's nested arguments so a simple example of here why where you might want to use a nested argument is for example imagine you had a, a system whereby you would have for example different pages so what you want the URL to say maybe is like page one page two page three page four and so on now instead of actually printing out page or returning page dash three four five six seven all that you want to query in the database is the number so this is the number here this number you want to actually send across to the database and query the database based on this number and obviously not the page dash but you don't want to just use five here because maybe you want to make it a little bit more seo friendly for example so you want to use page instead but you want to just remain or keep the value and use that value to actually make the query on the database so this is where we might use nested arguments. So let's go ahead and change this path here. So what we need to do is fairly simple. We're going to just need to we need to wrap this up. So we wrap this up one more. And now we need to add a question mark colon and then the prefix. So say post and that should do it. So let's go back and try this out. So here we've got post dash refresh and there we go. So obviously the post is called this or the slug. This is the slug that's been sent across to the view to query the database to retrieve the data and then display it on the page here. But of course we can now prefix this. So hopefully now you feel a little bit more comfortable utilizing these regular expressions. If you have been sent here from another tutorial thank you for listening and going through this tutorial and i'll see you in another tutorial thank you very much